Hello my Sock Universe and welcome to the first Iberian review of this season. Uh, quite an interesting one. It's the first season in Spain post Messi and I want to add Ramos um, and that probably will... I'm curious how this will impact uh, me or the, the public watching La Liga going forward. I think that La Liga still is a very exciting league. I mean, we had a super finish. It is a wide open league this season. Um, but we don't have the star power anymore that we used to have. Now after Ronaldo, we have also Messi gone. So that will be interesting. I also will include Portugal, although unfortunately, and I would have loved to see a little bit more, but I couldn't uh, see much of uh, the newly branded Liga Portugal. So you will see a little bit. Uh, at the end, I will uh, summarize all the happenings. There have already two rounds and I will comment briefly on uh, what I expect from that season. But let's start in Spain and here are the pre-season expectations. Um, and yeah, I think it is heavily influenced by the bookmakers odds but we see that Real Madrid Barcelona are still ahead of the rest um, and I think especially Atletico Madrid will be a little bit miffed about that to be honest um, it feels both teams are very heavily in transition uh, both teams can still field very good first team sides I have to say but I'm always questioning their depth and you know a little bit um, can they if there are injuries, uh, will this uh, have any impact? If we'll play in Europe, they will have to adjust there. So uh, these are my questions that I have going forward about those. Whereas Atletico Madrid not only kept most of their title winning squad together, but also got a really interesting uh, acquisitions as well. So uh, if I'm Atletico Madrid, I would pin this up there and say, no one is respecting us again. We are the defending champions and they still don't like us. Um, and also Sevilla probably even more. Um, so I, th I, th I think Atletico Madrid got Rodrigo de Paul from Udinese, who's a great player, but Sevilla also. I mean, uh, they got Eric Lamella uh, from uh, Spurs uh, and in general, this is also, also a squad. I mean, you already had uh, Papo Gomez in there that could do a whole lot of damage. But Atletico Madrid, at least as Diego Simeone, since you know, they will give the squad the desired grid. With Sevilla, I always have to always have to travel with consistency. I still call, and it has been for three years. Yes, they won in Europa League, but I call them the most frustrating team in Europe for the simple reason that whenever you just thought that they could make a challenge for the title, they blow it. Or they, or that they can make a challenge for a top four spot, or you know, go a little bit. They always blow it at that level. They just cannot make this last step. And I foresee it with, with Sevilla as well, although the squad, uh, in many ways looks very, very exciting and there is a potential challenge. Um, the For the European spots, I mean, the three teams that made it last, last season are still uh, favored there with Real Sociedad, Villarreal and uh, Betis. I think Bilbao, uh, Celta and Valencia probably can make a challenge there. Uh, also, as for the promoted teams, we see Espanyol and I would actually say that too, um, it was a little bit of freak relegation they cruised through uh, the Segunda so they will probably stay in Rayo Mallorca and Cadiz uh, at the moment the teams uh, that are projected at least preseason projections uh, to not make it but that was also relatively tight at the end of the, of the season so uh, we gotta see the first round, I mean, typically Spain, this, uh, and I think it is down also to the men's heat. I, I heard that uh, in the evening of the Sevilla game, uh, I think it was played at 10 and they still had 38 degrees. I mean, that's uh, probably a big contributing fact right there. So it was not a very goal filled round, except for uh, three of the uh, three games uh, uh, involving the top four teams did it. I actually want to start with the opening game, which was a very interesting one between Valencia and Getafe. Uh, the Bordelas star, star, because he went from Getafe to Valencia to give Valencia a whole lot more grit. Um, and that showed within three minutes. I mean, the foul was after, I think, 26 or 27 seconds. 
we had a player sent off for Valencia. Then they get a penalty that uh, Carlos Soler can convert. And then it was really a rough and tough game uh, that ended with a Valencia victory. Although, um, <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, uh, Getafe player that also says a send off. I mean, a really rough but interesting start to the post Messi Ramos era. I wanna say it. Maybe I'm giving too much credit to Ramos, but to me, uh, when, when I say this, Messi and Ronaldo have been dominating La Liga, but I also, also think that Sergio Ramos has a big, uh, was a big presence, at least on the defensive side of things, uh, that kind of showed the other, the non-artistic uh, art of playing in Spain, that is also, also that it can be rough in Spain too. Uh, as for Real Madrid, Speaking of Ramos, uh, their era started a relatively, uh, you know, a stuttering start. The first half, I would even say that Alaves had the better ch ch chances. A bit of a weird jersey, man. My because there's so much white on the Alaves jerseys. Uh, and those Real Madrid jerseys, I, I, I will do a review, I promise. But they don't look like Real Madrid jerseys in, 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 in a way. However, right after the second half, it all turned on around, uh, especially Benzema and Azar assist, then uh, Fernandes after Modric assist, and then Benzema stumbles in a third, a third one, shows a little penalty, gives the goal that Alaves would have deserved, but the score then was way, way too high, and then very late on, um, Alaba even assists Vinicius Jr., and it was rather easy in the end but not convincing at the end at the beginning not convincing is also something that you might say about uh atletico's showing at celta but that's exactly how atletico li likes it rough and tough fighting and angel correa getting two great goals uh the goal for uh celta came from a penalty uh handball for Llorente that i found a little bit uh iffy and Iago aspas Steps up and convoys that one. Later on, Aspas misses an absolute sitter. Where, where when when you see the, the how hard the way the, the game is going, you uh, or the way the play is unfolding, you would say, uh, how is he missing that one? I mean, the, he should make this in his sleep. And then the post Messi era started in Barcelona, and I really made an effort to watch this one. Although the thunderstorms outside uh, tried their best to not have me watch this one, and I have to say, Barcelona played really good. And that's exactly what, what I said. I think the, uh, the nominal first squad is really, 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 really good. Uh, that can probably challenge for a title as well, but they need to stay health healthy. Uh, when uh, Gerard Pique, who made actually the biggest move of, for Bar 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 Barcelona of the weekend by accepting a salary uh, cut and a deferral of salary. So in order that he can register Depay and, uh, and other players. And um, when he then scored his 1-0 after a cease from Depay, the guy here, he just enabled to get registered. So that's uh, <laughs> in, 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 interesting. It just felt a good field goal story and a fitting way to start the season, despite having one of the worst choices Barcelona ever had. Um, and then the game kind of petered to towards halftime. I mean, Real that is supposedly a good opponent, but I was disappointed. Absolutely disappointed uh, by them. And then Frankie de Jong plays a wonderful ball into Breathwaite, who makes it 2-0 uh, right after the half. Um, Brathwaite at the third, yeah, right, right, after it was almost the 60th minute. 3-0, and now Barcelona was cruising. You could make a lot of changes. You know, let's see how we can get uh, the whole thing over. And then suddenly uh, Lobete makes it 1-3, uh, and then a few minutes later, a free kick by Oyar Sabal. I mean, not very well defended free kick, one has to say, and maybe the free kick shouldn't have been one. Wonderful free kick, and it's 3-2. Oh, let's watch this. But Braithwaite again steps up, and uh, Roberto pulls it home. I have to say, Barcelona, I, that was a good showing by them. Uh, and one, yes, Rasodad never does anything in the camp now, and yes, they probably have not been tested, and we have to see how it goes, because last season they also started, started well and quickly fell apart a little bit. But a good start uh, to get into the post-Messi era. Sevilla's win over Rayo uh, and Rayo, I have to, I have to say, maybe not this jersey that they weren't there, but they have they have probably the best set in all of Europe this season, at least in my my opinion. That's a pretty tough call, but it was largely conditioned by uh, Lucas Zidane, 
the goalkeeper being sent, sent off by just holding back a uh, player. And then uh, the ensuing penalty was uh, converted by Enesiri. And then Eric Lamella adds two more goals uh, and scores as many goals as he has uh, scored seemingly in his whole Spurs Premier League career in just one game. So, uh, as I said, I think Sevilla can, is, could be very, very, very exciting. Monday, fortunately, I, didn't, I decided not to watch anything because it was all goalless, as were many other games there. Um, and so the expected standing is not much changed except the Barca is now slightly ahead of Real Madrid. Make of it was well, it's still very, very, very early. Uh, also, quite some movement down. Uh, we have now Elche, Rayo, and Cadiz. Um, being uh, favored to be relegated, but again, it's very, 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 very early. In the next round, we actually, uh, Barcelona continues the Basque uh, opening uh, at Athletic Club, which I think is the game of the weekend. Unfortunately, it's very, very uh, late to be played. Um, other games that, I mean, Getafe, Sevilla, I don't know why, I also looking a little bit at Espanol via Real and Granada Valencia. Those could be interesting ones to uh, watch. Briefly, uh, Portugal expected, yes, Sporting is not expected to repeat. It's Porto ahead of Benfica and then uh, Sporting and then Braga and then as typically a wide field in Portugal. We have three very interesting uh, promoted sides who all are now tipped to go down in Estoril, uh, Ruka and Vizela. Uh, who actually did uh, uh, some uh, some stuff? I mean, the first two rounds, every one of, of the favorites won in the first round, and then in the second in the second round, we had Sporting uh, beating Braga to uh, one that they had was probably the outstanding result of Vizela uh, getting also a win against Tonton Dela, one of the promoters. I think it was the first win of one of these. Um, which leads us not to much many changes in the expected setting, except for this broad midfield that might get into a conference league spot. So that was it from me for the Iberian review. Uh, please add anything that you might want to add, uh, because, you know, I tried to stay brief, but if you want to say more, uh, it is your... Uh, I would be happy to hear your op opinion. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!